Welcome to Speed TV Right Now Update. I'm John Luck. Our top story today, of course, takes place in Foxborough as the New England Patriots were sent off in style at the Super Bowl send-off rally. Owner Bob Kraft, head coach Bill Belichick, and players addressed the crowd before flying to Houston to prepare for Super Bowl 51 against the Falcons. We'll have a special edition of BT Right Now later on in the week previewing the Super Bowl as the Patriots look to win a fifth Lombardi Trophy. What's going to happen Sunday night? We want your thoughts and you can leave your comments on our Facebook page underneath this BT Right Now update video. Looking at some of the other top stories today, we told you right after his re-election, Bristol County Sheriff Thomas Hodgson offered his services of his inmates from his prison to President Donald Trump to build the wall that will block off the United States from Mexico. However, a bill filed by Representative Antonio Cabral would prohibit any Massachusetts inmates from laboring outside of the Bay State, along with a separate bill filed by Senator Michael Barrett that would require approval from the state to send anybody in the state's custody out of Massachusetts. Hodgson told local papers that the bills would interfere with agreements among sheriffs across the country which send inmates across state lines. The town election is just under three months away and we have a pair of contested races for the council seats. Incumbent District 3 Town Councilor Sandra Wright is challenged by Sean George, while District 6 Town Councilor Bill Wood is challenged by Michael White. District 3 still has no candidates, and nomination papers are available in the town clerk's office inside the academy building until March 2nd. Candidates need 150 signatures for town-wide positions and 100 signatures for district councilors. There are three council seats, along with a BR school committee seat, and three public library trustees. And turning to weather, we really haven't had a harsh blast of winter yet, not even the cold. So as we send over Jeff Fowler now, could the cold and even some snow be coming soon? Well, good Monday evening, everybody. Felt a little bit more like winter today, and temperatures have been cooling down. This evening It's generally in the mid-30s right now in Bridgewater. You can see off to our west here, starting to see readings in the 20s, and that's indicative of the weather that's on its way. We had a little bit of snow this afternoon. You had to go pretty far to the south and east down towards uh, off the Cape and also down towards uh, south coast Rhode Island over towards Nantucket. A few flurries today. It wasn't much, uh, but certainly a sign of what's on its way. It hasn't snowed in a while, so this may grab a few people by surprise. You can see that strip of snow right now moving through the Great Lakes. It doesn't have a lot with it, but it is moving into an atmosphere that's got a little bit more energy courtesy of the Great Lakes, which have not froze over yet. They're still pretty mild. So we're going to pick up some moisture there. We're also going to pick up some moisture as this storm starts to redevelop off to our south. You can see it on this map here. Here's the main storm system. We're also a little bit of redevelopment just south of New England. And when that happens with these clippers, you can start to have a little bit more energy with them and a little bit more snow. And as good as you look at future casting, it shows that nicely as we go through your Tuesday afternoon, a strip of some decent snow. It's going to hold on here actually into uh, early Wednesday morning, maybe, as we have what we call an inverted trough. It's kind of a complicated scientific way to say that essentially the energy off to our west is going to be hooking up with a storm system developing off the coastline. That's going to give us a little bit of snow. I think uh, this model gives you a general idea of what we're looking at, about two to four inches of snow, but that's based on a one to ten ratio. What does that mean? If temperatures are right around 30 degrees, you'd get about two inches. They're going to be a bit colder than that. So you could get a bit more. What are we thinking about for the region? Well, generally, two to four inches seems to be a good bet around the Bridgewater area. But again, uh, if temperatures cool down a bit more, you go just to the north of there, and we have generally three to six across the northern half of Massachusetts. Now, it is possible that could be a few higher amounts as well. What is this map? This is uh, about the next eight to 14 days. And we're showing you this because it's a flip in the pattern that we've had, a very stormy and cool uh, conditions out west. But now, that below normal temperatures are going to make their way into the northeast. And that's going to be combined with above normal precipitation. So it's colder and you have more precip. That means we have the chance for snowfall uh, over the next couple of weeks. And we're going to watch that. How about your Tuesday? Well, as you start the morning commute, we'll have uh, partly cloudy skies. Temperatures generally in the teens. By lunchtime, we'll make it up into the low to mid-20s. And then that snow breaks out probably around 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Actually pick up an intensity here towards the evening commute and temperatures in the upper 20s to around 30. That's the primary game in town here this week. It is a drying out and will be clear for most of the rest of the week. It will warm up briefly on Wednesday into early Thursday and then the cold front right back in here. And it gets cold by the end of the week. We'll keep an eye on that storm by post Super Bowl Sunday or first thing Monday with another chance of snow. Thanks, Jeff. The BR Children won their 10th game against Durfee last week, earning the team a spot in the MIA basketball tournament. However, a big test was seen right here on BTV as BR took on Mansfield in the top 15 matchup.
we talked about, this is the first time that we've seen the stands really full for this basketball team. Going back to a few years ago, this is a team that really has been looking for that big win, and tonight is a great opportunity. Nice bounce pass to Damerville, who puts in for two. Tessin for three. Yes. Nice look there. Tessin just stepped a little bit away from his man. His man wasn't looking. Got a wide open three. Weber at the buzzer. That one is good. What a way for Mansfield to end the first quarter with a three-point shot. Not getting in the paint, not getting to the free throw line. Open man all day for three. That one falls for Weber. Well, if and this thing is almost getting out of hand for the BR Trojans if who Mansfield are down by 10. Mansfield is willing to shoot that many threes, <laughs> eventually they're going to hit some of them. He realized that there's no one there as Mansfield gets another turnover. Bowen, buzzer beater. The third straight buzzer beater for Mansfield. Three by Perry, doesn't fall. And that's Pretty the much story, the of, the story of the night. That's for the third time this season, Bridgewater Rainham is on the short end as they lose 52 to 45. They fall to 10 and three. Meanwhile, Mansfield gets their 10th win of the season. A road matchup against Durfee is next for BR coming up later on this weekend. And Derby is a team that BR actually beat by 40 plus points. So BR Trojans look to get back on the right side of the wing column. And that'll do it for this BT Right Now update. I'm John Luck.